Good afternoon, everybody. You are listening to Lake Stevens Vikings Varsity Baseball. My name is Payne Patchett here for game number 16 of the 2019 Varsity Baseball season of a possible 18-game shortened season because of the Marion Marauders, but we'll get to that later here today in a 57-degree, partly cloudy afternoon back here at Lake Stevens High School. The Vikings looking to even the series against the Mount Vernon Bulldogs after the Bulldogs beat them yesterday at Sherman Anderson Field by the final score of 4-1. to one. Now, Lake Stevens, they lost yesterday, bringing them down into the West Coast standings, but the good news for the Vikings is that the team that's ahead of them by one game in the West Coast standings, the Kamiak Knights, who currently has the final West Coast playoff spot, also lost. They lost to the Glacier Peak Grizzlies, the Vikings' next opponent, but a final score of 13-11, to 11. and today these two teams will face off as well as the Vikings and the Mount Vernon Bulldogs. As usual for every home game, we do not have the Mount Vernon lineup just yet, but right now, for the Lake Stevens Vikings starting, making his second start of the year in his sixth appearance, is number six, Theron Perkins, entering this game, no wins and two losses with an ERA of 2.14. When we come back, it'll be the top of the first inning. It will be Mount Vernon, the, their offense, trying to pick up what they left off yesterday against the senior, Theron Perkins. And we are now back in the top of the first inning here from Lake Stevens High School. The Vikings looking to even the series against the Mount Vernon Bulldogs who entered this game with a 9-6 overall record and now an updated conference record of 4-3. It will be the leadoff hitter, the catcher Cole Williams against Theron Perkins. First pitch of foul ball. It will be the same first three batters for manager Tony Walden as yesterday. It will be the catcher Cole Williams, the shortstop Travis Ord, and the starting third baseman Skyler Jensen against Theron Perkins, who is making his second start of the year in his sixth appearance this year, the 0-1. And a foul chopper goes towards the on-deck hitter, counted 0-2. And, and the lineup for the 9-6 Mount Vernon Bulldogs, as told by manager Tony Wolden, the first three hitters, the catcher Cole Williams, the shortstop, Travis Orton, the third baseman, Skyler Jensen. The cleanup hitter is the first baseman, number 28, Eric McGahee. And the five hitter is Riley Olmstead, the 0-2. And a strike three called, Theron Perkins gets Cole Williams looking. Yesterday, it took Devin McWaters 11 pitches to strike him out. This time, and today, Theron... It only takes him three to do it. Here is the shortstop, Travis Ord. Went 0 for 3 with an RBI. Theron, the first pitch. Upstairs, ball one. The five hitter, the starting left fielder, number 14, Riley Olmstead, the winning pitcher from yesterday's game. Struck out 10 batters at a complete game, 4 to 1 win. At the sixth spot is the center fielder, Dylan Carter. At the seventh spot is the designated hitter, Finn Wilson, the 1-0. And a short ground ball fielded by the third baseman, Ethan Jansen. Throws in the first baseman, Bailey Corley, in time for the second out in the top of the first. Here is the third baseman, number 15, Skylar Jensen. At the eighth spot, the right fielder, Sam Nelson. And at the ninth spot, the second baseman, Kyle Molden. So Steven Gard, who was the starting left fielder yesterday, will be in the dugout. And Skyler Jensen, he went 0 for 2 with a walk and was hit. First pitch. And a ball one inside. And there are four reserves for the Mount Vernon Bulldogs. Steven Gard, Lane Harlan, Dane Williams, and Ethan Lewis. Theron, the 1-0. And a short ground ball fielded by Theron. Tosses it to Bailey. And that will go for the third out. In a very quick top of the first inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. And Lake Stevens makes work for the Bulldogs in the top of the first. Here is number 34, Hudson Rines, who is the starting pitcher for the Mount Vernon Bulldogs for the second straight season as their number two starter. He'll face off against the top three hitters for the Vikings. Tanner Lynn, the left fielder, number 20, due to the different uniforms that the Vikings are wearing instead of 23. It'll be the shortstop Hunters Alaska at the three spot is his pitching counterpart number six Theron Perkins as the Vikings look to get some runs on the board as they prevent Mount Vernon from scoring any in the top of the first. And we are now back in the bottom of the first inning. Mount Vernon nothing Lake Stevens coming up to the plate starting off with the left fielder number 20 Tanner Lynn against the number two starting pitcher for the Mount Vernon Bulldogs number 34 the senior Hudson Rhines the first pitch Low in the dirt, ball one to the starting catcher, Cole Williams. The lineup for the seven and eight Lake Stevens Vikings, who are two and seven in conference play, as told by manager Josh White after this pitch to 1 0. A chopper, this one getting over the head of Rhines. Fielded by the second baseman, who doesn't throw to first in time. Tanner Lynn outruns the throw, and Tanner has an infield single to start the bottom of the first inning. 
Brings up the starting shortstop, Hunter Zalasco. Entering this game, a 303 average, 10 for 33, 6 for 7 in stolen bases with four doubles. Tanner Lynn looking to get stolen base number 18 to extend his school record. Hudson, first pitch. Lying drive ball, fielded by the third baseman Jensen. Throw to second for one, throw to first is not in time for two. And a nice play by the third baseman Skyler Jensen to field that ball. It takes three pitches to get the first out in the bottom of the first, a five to four to get Tanner at second. And Hunter will be safe on the slow throw to the first baseman Eric McGahee. Here is the number three hitter, the starting pitcher, number six Theron Perkins and Hudson. First pitch, and this will hit Theron square on the back. It will be the fourth time this year that Theron has been hit. And it will move runners to first and second. Hunter at second base, Theron at first. Theron sticking with that 440 average was the only Lake Stevens hitter that really excelled against the ace pitcher Riley Olmstead from Mount Vernon. Now here is the cleanup hitter, the second baseman number 12, Aaron Lampinen. Hudson looking at Hunter at second, first pitch. And a first pitch foul. The rest of the lineup for the Lake Stevens Vikings after Tanner, Hunter, Theron, and Aaron. The five spot at the right field is Trey Long. The six spot at, starting at first base is Bailey Corley. At the seven spot, the catcher Tommy Lindgren. Eight spot is the third baseman Ethan Jansen. And at the ninth spot, playing at center field, it will be Devin McWaters, the 0-1. Hudson puts Hunter's Alaska in a rundown. Second baseman throws it to the third baseman, Skyler Jensen. Fakes the throw, throws the second, and it gets... Hunter's Alasco in time at second, a one, four, five, six. Gets him out for the second out. <clears throat> and that'll be the second out of the bottom of the first inning. And he reserves for the Lake Stevens Vikings, Cameron Austin, Caden Pattison, Colton Hogel, Xander Fogel, and Tate Bruss, the 0-1 from Hudson Rhines. Inside, count is even. Here we go, hunt out. At one and one, the defensive positions for the Mount Vernon Bulldogs, as told by manager Tony Wolden on the mound, is Hudson Ryan's behind the plate is Cole Williams. Throw to first, not in time. Not as quick of a release as Riley Olmstead yesterday, who was able to get Theron out at first base at one point yesterday. Count stays at one ball and one strike. And Ryan's getting the sign from Williams. Throw to first, it is. Not in time. A close play as the first baseman, Eric McGahey, not able to tag Theron. The infield for Mount Vernon. Third base is Skylar Jensen. Shortstop is Travis Ord. The second baseman, Kyle Walden. And the first base is Eric McGahey. On the outfield, playing at left over Steven Gard is Riley Olmstead. The 1-1. Upstairs, ball two. At center field, Dylan Carter. And at right field is Sam Nelson. Finn Wilson is batting as the designated hitter for the starting pitcher, Hudson Rines. Two balls, one strike. Rines throw to first. Not in time again. Theron not catching any breaks over at first base, not even when he went two for three. In yesterday's game over at Sherman Anderson Field, count stays at two balls and one strike. The pitch. Upstairs, ball three. And Hudson looking over, 3-1. Upstairs, ball four. And once again, there are runners on first and second, this time with two outs in the bottom of the first. Trey Long, the right fielder, comes out to the plate. And Lake Stevens, the first time since they've worn the white uniform since their final non-conference game. The first pitch, foul ball over the fence. Count starts at 0-1. Here we go. Count starts at 0-1, wind up. Chopper, this one going to Skylar Jensen who touches the third base bag and is able to get Theron out on a fielder's choice. And that will end the first inning. It is no runs on one hit. No errors and two runners left on. As the score will be 0-0 Lake Stevens.
getting some damage on him early, but does not result in any runs on the board. Lake Stevens nothing, Mount Vernon nothing at the end of one as Theron Perkins will face off against the middle of the order. That is the first baseman, Eric McGahee, the left fielder, Riley Olmstead, and the center fielder, Dylan Carter. 0-0 at the end of one. And we are now back in the top of the second inning. Lake Stevens and Mount Vernon scoreless after one. And Theron Perkins, he threw only seven pitches in the top of the first inning, striking out the leadoff hitter Cole Williams. They'll face off against Eric McGahee, the starting first baseman, with a ball to the dirt. To start off with a 1-0 count. McGahee went one for four in yesterday's game with a single in the first inning. He's once again playing at first base. Theron facing off against the middle of the order. Eric McGahee, the left fielder, Riley Olmstead, and Dylan Carter, the 1-0. And a ball two outside. And the defensive position for the Lake Stevens Vikings is told by manager Josh White on the mound. Theron Perkins behind the plate is Tommy Lindgren, 2-0. And a strike one looking, count two and one. On the infield at third base is Ethan Jansen. Shortstop is Hunters Alaska. Second base is Aaron Lampinen. And at first base is Bailey Corley. On the outfield at left field is Tanner Lind. Center field is Devin McWaters. And at right field is Trey Long, the 2-1. And a foul ball. Grounder hits the fence. Count is even at two and two. And Theron, the 2-2, one hopper. In the dirt, full count, three and two. And Theron, the payoff, chopper. This one going to Hunters, Alaska, the shortstop. Throw to first is in time for the first out. And he'll get him for the first out in the top of the second. Riley Olmstead, the left fielder, coming up to the plate. Yesterday he had a really big game yesterday with a solo home run in the third inning. <laughs> Off of McWaters, it increased the Bulldogs' lead to 3-1. to one. And he would be the winning pitcher throwing a complete game, striking out 10 batters as the Bulldogs would eventually win that game by a score of 4-1. to one. First pitch, past, past the catcher Tommy Lindgren. As it goes outside, hits the backstop, count is 1-0. So the other games around Wesco Baseball, Jackson basically getting a day off yesterday after not playing Mariner. In addition to the Lake Stevens Mount Vernon game, the 1-0. And he checks wing, strike one, looking, count is even at 1-1. One one. There was the Monroe at Cascade game, which got a article in the Everett Herald yesterday in which Joe McBride, who originally played at first base for Cascade, the 1-1, a foul chopper. He'll hit the fence right next to the on-deck hitter, Dylan Carter, count at one and two. As Cascade will beat Monroe by the score of two to one, and with Mount Vernon's win, the Bulldogs and the Bearcats are tied for the number three seed in the Wesco Conference. As both of these teams, they split the series against each other, but have the same number of runs. And he won two pitch, strike three called as Theron freezes another batter. This time it's Riley Olmstead for his second strikeout of the afternoon. Here is Dylan Carter, the center fielder. And the first pitch, upstairs, ball one. But even though Mount Vernon and Monroe are tied for the number three seed, the big game that the Vikings were paying attention to is between Glacier Peak and Kamiak. Glacier Peak, their next opponent. Kamiak, the team ahead of them in the standings, to 1-0. A foul ball opposite field. Past the Lake Stevens dugout. Evens the count at 1-1. One one. It was a high-scoring game up at Muckle Teo at Kamiak High School. The final score, Glacier Peak 13, Kamiak 11. And it keeps the Knights down to the final spot in the West Coast standings and within striking distance. A check swing ground ball fielded by Bailey Corley who touches the first base bag on a 1-1 count that will end the top of the second. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. Another 1-2-3 inning by Theron Perkins. Hudson Rines will face off against the 6-7-8 hitters. Bailey Corley, Tommy Lindgren, 
and Ethan Jansen as the Vikings look to get a run on the board. Scoreless after one and a half. And we're now back into the bottom of the second inning. Hudson Rines facing off against the number six hitter, the starting first baseman Bailey Corley as the Vikings look to get something started here. First pitch is a bunt, it is a foul. As it'll fall past home plate, Bailey trying his hand at a bunt single. Count starts at 0-1, Hudson Rines throwing five balls for six strikes and 11 pitches. Hudson will face off against Bailey Corley, the catcher Tommy Lindgren, and the third baseman Ethan Jansen. And the last time the Vikings wore these white uniforms, 0-1. Swing and a miss, strike two. It was in the final non-conference game against the Meadowdale Mavericks in that game. Bailey Corley hit one over to left field and easily one of the best highlights of the entire 2019 season right there. It was a pinch hit home run by Bailey, the 0-2. Swing and a miss, strike three. Gets Bailey swinging. For the first strikeout of the afternoon, here is the number seven hitter, the starting catcher, Tommy Lindgren. First pitch, hot line shot, straight to the shortstop, Ord, who drops the ball. Quick throw to first, it is not in time. As Travis Ord, he slid for it right near short left field, bobbled the ball. Throw to first is not in time, it'll be ruled as an error by the shortstop, Travis Ord. As Cameron Austin, who was scratched out of the lineup from his usual center field spot, will pinch run for Tommy, as they'll bring in the third baseman, Ethan Jansen. Uh, Jansen playing as the starting third baseman. To Theron Perkins on the mound, and the last start was at Cascade. Last week, he went 0 for 1 with a strikeout and a walk and a sacrifice bond. Hudson, first pitch. And it will hit Ethan. And the Vikings will once again have runners on first and second base. And the second hit batter for Hudson Rines. He hit Theron back in the first inning. Now here's the number nine hitter, number 11, Devin McWaters. Hudson, first pitch, tries bunting, that goes straight to the third baseman, and he's not able to get the ball in time, a perfect bunt by Devin McWaters. Another one. And the bases are loaded with a perfect bunt single by McWaters. Been a while since we've seen that. And it's bases loaded with one out. Going back to the top of the order in Tanner Lynn, the left fielder. He got a base hit on a 1-0 count and got out on a fielder's choice. McWaters, he was 3 for 13, entering the at-bat. First pitch, a hard shot, a bloop. Is that going to fall fair? Yes, it will in the left field. Cameron's going to score. Ethan Jansen the throw to home it is. Not in time. The catcher dropped the ball. Two-run single by Tanner Lynn. And the Vikings have an early 2-0 lead. Evening bean, baby. Oh, Ethan, it was a bloop single that falls right near the left field line past the third baseman, Skyler Jensen. Lindgren scores, my mistake, Cameron Austin scores from third, and Ethan Jansen scores from second. As the catcher dropped the baseball, here's Hunter Zalasco. McWaters moves to second. First pitch, hard hit ball, line drive into the hole in center field. Devin is riding around third base. He is going to score. The throw home is not in time. And Lake Stevens adds to the runs. It is 3-0 on an RBI single by Hunter Zalasco. McWater scoring all the way from second. And the Vikings start strong with a 3-0 lead. Here is Theron Perkins. He got hit on the first pitch he saw back in the bottom of the first inning. The Vikings heating up here in Lake Stevens High School. Tanner at second, Hunter at first, first pitch. Fly ball, that is out foul as the first baseman, Eric McGahee, is running for it. Count starts at 0-1. It was four straight, my mistake, five straight first pitch hits. Starting with Tommy Lindgren, who hit one to the shortstop. My mistake is three straight, but it was five straight 
first pitches that ended in a result. It was Tommy who had the error. Ethan who got hit, Devin with a single, Tanner with a single, then Hunter with a single. The runner goes, 0-1. Throw to third is not in time. And Tanner has himself another stolen base. The team high 18th of the year brings him to third. And Hunter stays at first base. Count is even at one and one. Brings runners on the corners with one out. It was also RBI's number five and six for Tanner. It was RBI number seven for Hunter. And Zalasko oh, looking to go, but does not count as one and two as a strike right down the middle. And Theron entering this game with a 440 batting average, 22 of 50 with seven doubles and two triples. 11 runs, four walks, 10 strikeouts, and hit three times. One, two, swing and a miss, strike three. Hunter will steal second. It'll be the second strikeout for Hudson Rines and Zalasco will get his seventh stolen base of the year. Here is Aaron Lampinen with a chance to knock in a couple more runs in. And Rines first pitch. Upstairs ball one. Lampinen entering this game with a 267 batting average, 12 for 45 with three doubles. Six runs has been walked now five times and struck out eight times and was hit three times this year. The 1-0 in the dirt inside, ball two. Two balls and no strikes, Hudson Rines. In the stretch to wind up. Throw to third is not in time to get Tanner. As Hudson made a quick throw to third base, and he, third baseman Skyler Jensen not able to get Tanner Lind at third base. Count stays at 2-0. And, oh. and the 2-0. Oh. Foul ball is the fence, 2-1. So what it means with Racer Peak beating Kamiak is that Kamiak is once again up by one game in the standings over Lake Stevens, which means if the Grizzlies sweep Kamiak and the Vikings win, they are tied for the playoff spot again. 2-1, ball three. That means that the Vikings will be tied for the fifth and final playoff spot with Kamiak. And due to the run margin that Lake Stevens has over the Knights, they would overtake him in the final spot, the 3-1. Fly ball, this one going into center field. Center fielder Dylan Carter is under it and will make the catch. For the third out in the bottom of the second inning, but the Vikings strike first and strong with three runs on three hits, one error, and two runners left on the Vikings. Taking early 3-0 lead as we go to the top of the third there and facing off against the bottom three hitters of the order. Finn Wilson, the designated hitter. Sam Nelson, the right fielder. And Kyle Wolden, the second baseman. As Lake Stevens takes an early 3-0 lead. And we are now back in the top of the third inning. Lake Stevens taking an early 3-0 lead over the Mount Vernon Bulldogs. Theron Perkins, the starting pitcher, will face off against the bottom three hitters of the batting order, starting with the designated hitter, Finn Wilson. And Theron, first pitch. Inside, ball one. Theron will face off against the designated hitter, Finn Wilson. The right fielder, Sam Nelson. And the starting second baseman, Kyle Walden. Finn Wilson in yesterday's game. He went one for two with an RBI and a run in that two-run second inning. The 1-0 ground ball. This one getting into the second baseman, Aaron Lampinen. Throws the first. It is in time for the first out in the top of the third. Almost hit the mound there, but it'll be fielded by Lampinen for the second out. My mistake, the first out in the top of the third. Here is the number eight hitter, the right fielder, number two, Sam Nelson. In yesterday's game, he went 0 for 1 with a sacrifice bunt. A walk in the third inning. It was struck out swinging against Colton Hogel in the fifth. And the first pitch, inside ball one. And the 1-0, and a ball two under the strike zone. 
Uh, Theron throwing seven pitches in the first inning. He then threw 13 in the second inning, five balls and eight strikes against three hitters. And Theron, the 1-0, check swing. That is a strike one looking, two and one. Two balls, one strike there in the pitch. Ball three. Theron behind on the count, three balls and one strike. Second time this afternoon that he has hit three balls in an at bat. Three and one. Hard hit shot, this one getting past the glove of a diving Hunters Alasco in the center field. And Mount Vernon gets their first base hit in the top of the third off a one out single. Here is the second baseman, Kyle Wolden. And Kyle is the nine hitter yesterday. He went one for two with an RBI single in the second inning. It initially tied the game and he was stranded at third. He was walked in the third, struck out looking to start the bottom of the six. In the win over the Vikings yesterday, first pitch. Check swing, strike one looking. Count is 0-1. Ball gets away from Tommy. As the count evens at 1-1, one one, Sam Nelson stays at first. A nice stop by Tommy Lindgren, the catcher. By keeping that ball in his line of sight, Sam Nelson staying at first. Count now one ball and one strike. And the pitch. A strike two looking, count one and two. One ball, two strikes, Theron. And a strike three called. Theron gets Kyle Walden looking for strikeout number three. Brings us to the top of the order for the second time around. Cole Williams, the catcher. He struck out looking on three pitches. And Theron, first pitch, and a... Chopper fielded by Ethan Jansen. Running throw to first in time. And a nice play by Bailey Corley to get him out. Is he out? No, he is safe. He is off the bag. And Sam Nelson goes to third. So there are now runners on the corners. as the umpire rules that Bailey Corley was off the bag. And so the end result will be an error on the third baseman, Ethan Jansen. It was a nice play by Bailey Corley to get the ball, to keep the ball in play, but the umpire said he got his foot off of the bag as the infield umpire checked with the home plate umpire for the result. First pitch, first pitch to the shortstop, Travis Ord is a ball one. Now because of the result, Sam Nelson is at third base and Cole Williams is at first. Runners on the corners the first time this afternoon that Mount Vernon is threatening to get some runs on the board. One ball, no strike. They're in the pitch. Swing and a miss, strike one. And it was a little late for the infield umpire to make the call as a number of the Lake Stevens players were already walking towards the dugout. One ball, one strike. Theron, chopper. This one going to Zalasco. Toss it to the second baseman, Aaron Lampinen. Now that will officially end the top of the third. It's a fielder's choice. No runs on one hit, one error, and one runner left on. The score stays 3-0 Lake Stevens in a now harmless scenario. In the top of the third, Hunted Rhines will face off against the five, six, and seven hitters. Right fielder Trey Long, first baseman Bailey Corley, and the catcher Tommy Lindgren as the Vikings look to add to that 3-0 lead. 
And we are now back in the to bottom of the third inning. Lake Stevens trying to add to that 3 nothing lead as the Vikings got three runs off of Hudson Rines in the bottom of the second. Looking to add with more. Here's the right fielder Trey Long and an 0-1 pitch to a fielder's choice. First pitch, a hard hit ball. This one going in the left center field. Back it goes. Going back it is. Off of the wall. Trey goes to second. And he will stay there. A leadoff double for the senior Trey Long. Trey was looking for three, but then he saw that the ball went into the infield pretty quickly from Riley Olmstead, the left fielder, to the shortstop. Travis Ord, that was on the first pitch. Here is Bailey Corley looking to knock one in. Strikeout swing on three pitches. Swing on all three of them. First pitch. Strike one looking. And Ryan, 17 pitches in that second inning against eight batters, four balls, 13 strikes. That is hard to believe. But then again, for most of the at bat, for most of the inning, the hitter is just straight up swung at whatever, uh, whatever first pitch he threw at him. As it was Tommy who swung at the first pitch and got on base. Ethan got hit. Devin got a base hit. Tanner got a base hit. Hunter got a base hit. And that was a huge contributor to only 17 pitches in that inning. And the 0-1. And Trey does not even move a muscle. He walks a couple steps to second base as Ord goes to third. Jensen goes home. And the first baseman, Eric McGahee, goes home. And Kyle Wolden goes to second. Same same scenario. Rudder goes. 0-1. Fly ball foul. Evens to count at 1-1. One and, one and the dugout does not like that Bailey swung at that pitch. Count is 0-2. Trey. As Trey is looking to get his eighth stolen base of the year. As he is currently seven for eight on the base pass. 0-2. Oh Fly ball. Another foul. Count stays at 0-2 is to be another foul ball. And Ryan's getting the sign from Cole Williams. Trey at second. And Ryan's looks at second, does not throw. Here we go. Count stays at 0-2. Trey along getting on base on a first pitch double. And Hudson looking at second again. Now Lake Stevens, if they can pull this off and if Glacier Peak beats Kamiak, they have a playoff spot again. Runner goes 0-2 and a foul check swing. He'll hit the fence behind home plate. And the count stays at no balls and two strikes. And there is already activity in the bullpen for the Mount Vernon Bulldogs. That is number 10, the 0-2. And another check swing by Corley. As it is number 10, Dylan Carter. The center fielder, the starting center fielder, he is currently warming up. Count at no balls and two strikes, Hudson Rines. Swing and a missed strike three. He got some swinging again for the first out in the bottom of the third. Here is Tommy Lindgren got on base on a first pitch error by the shortstop Travis Ord. My mistake, not number 10 for Mount Vernon. It is number 17, Ethan Lewis. So it's my mistake is a number malfunction on my part. Hudson, first pitch to Tommy, tries butting for it. That will fall fair. It'll be a perfect butt by Tommy Lindgren. Runners on the corners, throw to third is not in time to get Trey. Another perfect butt by the Lake Stevens Vikings, this time by Tommy Lindgren. As will be once again replaced by Cameron Austin. And once again, Tommy swings at it on the first pitch. Now here is Ethan Jansen, the eight hitter. He got hit on the first pitch he saw back in the second inning. It was one of the three runs that scored. 
Go, do your job here. Let's go. Come on, baby. Runners on the corners with one out. Hudson Rines. First pitch, runner goes. And Cameron Austin has a stolen base. There's the ball go in the dirt. Ball one. As that'll be stolen base number nine on the year for Cameron Austin. He has a perfect nine for nine on the season. Count starts at one and oh. And Hudson. Low ball two. Uh, one plus for the Mount Vernon Bulldogs when you have a pitcher like Riley Olmstead who will throw a complete game and will have a performance like what he had yesterday. You have a lot of pitchers to go through. The 2-0 line shot. This gets into the hole in center field. Trey's going to score. Cameron's riding around third. No, he will stay at third base. And the runners will stay on the corners. An RBI single by Ethan Jansen. The score now, Lake Stevens four, Mount Vernon nothing. Cameron Austin looking the round around third, but has decided to stay. Uh, bring us to the number nine hitter, Devin McWaters. Got a perfect bunt on the first pitch he saw. That got him on base, and he was one of the three runs that scored. He scored on the RBI single by Hunters Alasco. And Hudson, first pitch, runner goes. And a strike one looking as Ethan Jansen Gets a stolen base with no throw. As Ethan Jansen has his second stolen base of the year, he is two for three. And a timeout by Mount Vernon, the entire infield walking up to the mound. Ethan Lewis, number 17, warming up in the bullpen for Mount Vernon. This is the first time in this Series. Now Mount Vernon. Has been threatened this badly with runs on the board. Uh, Hudson Rines is still on the mound. Ethan Lewis is done warming up in the bullpen as the uh, assistant coach for Mount Vernon. Tell, holding them back, telling them to stay in the dugout for now. Count starts at no balls and one strike. Devin McWaters, runners on first. My mistake, second and third base. And Hudson getting the sign from the catcher, Cole Williams. Infield is in the 0-1. Fly ball, that is out for a foul. Count is 0-2. Another 0-2 count for Hudson Rines. He had one against Bailey Corley. Is, is able to strike him out swinging. Infield still in, 0-2. And, and a foul ball. Yep, foul ball. Count is 0-2. A foul tip into the glove of Cole Williams, and it was a one-hopper. Go. 0-2. Outside, ball one. Devin with a chance of knocking a couple. One and two, the pitch. Strike three called, he gets Devin looking. Strikeout number four on the afternoon for Hudson Rines. Now we go to the top of the order for the third time around, the third time in three innings. It is Tanner Lind, and he comes in with a pretty good resume so far today. Two for two with two singles and two RBIs. First pitch, foul ball. As he fouls off of the curve. Now Tanner Lynn got a single in the bottom of the first inning and got out on a fielder's choice hit by Hunters Alaska, the next batter. In the second inning, he got a couple RBIs scoring Tommy Lindgren, my mistake, Cameron Austin, and Ethan Jansen on a bloop single to left. 0-1. And, and a foul. Count is now 0-2. Hits the top of the roof of the shed behind the Mount Vernon dugout along the third base line. Count is 0-2. And the center fielder, Dylan Carter, seeing that a softball is hit into his field. The 0-2, and side, ball one. Taylor. 
One ball and two strikes, runners on second and third, Rines. And a ground ball, this gets into the glove of Jensen who throws the first, it is in time for the third out. And that will end the bottom of the third inning. One run on three hits, no errors. And two runners left on, Lake Stevens now leads four to nothing. Over the Mount Vernon Bulldogs, Theron Perkins will face off against Skylar Jensen, Eric McGahee, and Riley Olmstead, the three, four, and five hitters, as he looks to preserve this four nothing lead. And we are now back in the top of the fourth inning. Lake Stevens got another run on the board. It makes it the score four to nothing. Theron Perkins against the number three hitter, Skylar Jensen. First pitch, upstairs, ball one. Theron made Jensen hit on a 1 0 pitch and a ground ball straight back to Theron to end the top of the first. And once again, he'll start with another 1 0 count. The pitch, a hard hit shot as foul. Past the right field line, evens to count at 1 and 1. Theron will face off against the 3, 4, and 5 hitters. The third baseman, Skylar Jensen. The first baseman, Eric McGahee. And the left fielder, Riley Olmstead. And he threw 15 pitches. In that third inning, he threw seven in the first, 13 in the second, 15 in the third, the 1-1. One, one. Foul chopper count at one and two. With a total of 35 pitches. Through three innings, while Hudson Rines, in his opposition, has thrown 48 pitches through three innings. As even approached the possibility of being taken out with a pitcher already in the bullpen. One ball and two strikes there, and Outside, evens to count at two and two. And the two two Theron, ground ball goes to the second baseman, Aaron Lampin, and throws it to Bailey in time for the first out in the top of the fourth. Sometimes, if you just want to just let loose and go through a game like that, just look at the right field. You have a guy who's straight up yelling anything he can think of that's appropriate in a public school setting <laughs> out into the field and out for everyone to hear that is Trey Long. This is the greatest thing in the world sometimes. Here's the first baseman, Eric McGahee, grounded out to Hunter on a full count. First pitch, chopper. Speaking of Hunter, the ball goes straight to him. Throw to Bailey at first is in time. On the first pitch to Eric McGahee, Will be a ground out to Zalasco. Will be the second out in the top of the fourth. Here is the left fielder, Riley Olmstead. Struck out looking on a 1-2 pitch. <laughs> Josh White, the manager, pushing Lynn, the left fielder, and McWaters, the center fielder, deep. First pitch, check swing, ball one. One out, Theron. Strike one looking, evens the count. And Theron looking to get his first win of the year. He is 0-2 with an ERA of 2.14 entering this game. His ERA has considerably gotten lower since then. The 1-1 strike two looking. To the left fielder, Riley Olmstead. This is the guy that hit the home run yesterday. Now. He has a chance of getting struck out. The one, two, low. Count is even, two balls and two strikes. So currently the game's going on today. It is Cascade playing on the road against Monroe, two, two. Ground ball, this one is fair. Fielded by Ethan Jansen. Throw to first will not be in time as it'll be an infield single for Riley Olmstead. It was a nice play by Ethan Jansen, who fields it right near the line. Was not able to throw the ball in time to get him for the third out. Here is the center fielder, Dylan Carter. He grounded out on a check swing, 1-1 pitch to the first baseman, Bailey Corley, to end the top of the second inning. And Theron, first pitch, swing, and a miss, strike one. Out, 
And Theron the 0-1. Swing and a miss, strike two. <coughs> Count at 0-2, Theron ahead of the count. Riley Olmstead at first, the 0-2, check swing. So the other game's going on today, currently at Snohomish. It is Kamiak at Glacier Peak. Glacier Peak trying to sweep the Knights. Cascade playing on the road against the Monroe Bearcats. Cascade trying to sweep Monroe. And what was supposed to be Jackson at Mariner turns out once again to be Another day off for the Jackson Timberwolves as their conference record will not stay will stay the same. The 0-2 ground ball to Ethan Jansen who throws to second base in time to get Riley Olmstead on a fielder's choice. Lake Stevens doing a really good job though here after three and a half. It is no runs on one hit, no errors, and one runner left on. It is still four nothing. Lake Stevens. Over Mount Vernon, the Bulldogs bring in a new pitcher already in number 17, Ethan Lewis. As he will take over for Hudson Rines, who's currently online for the loss. The score, Mount Vernon nothing, Lake Stevens four. As Lewis will face off against the heart of the order, the two, three, and four hitters, Hunter Velasco, Theron Perkins, and Aaron Lampinen. Four nothing, Lake Stevens. And we are now back in the bottom of the fourth inning, the first pitch. From the new pitcher for the Mount Vernon Bulldogs, number 17, Ethan Lewis, is a strike one looking to the starting shortstop, number 10, Hunters Alasco, the 0 1. A strike two looking. Lewis will face off against the shortstop, Alasco, the starting pitcher, Theron Perkins, and the second baseman, Aaron Lampinen, count one ball and one strike. And the windup. And the count now one ball and two strikes. Hudson Ryan's finishing up his afternoon. Three innings, 48 pitches, seven hits, four runs, three of them unearned, one walk and four strikeouts on two hit batters. The one, two, and a slow, a slow foul grounder that goes straight to the pitcher, but it lands foul first as it rolls towards the pitcher's mound. Count stays at one and two. And the one, two. And a short line drive ball fielded up, ground ball fielded by Skylar Jensen. Throw to first base is in time by a step. Not a line drive, a ground ball to the third baseman Skylar Jensen. For the first out in the bottom of the fourth. Here's Theron Perkins, 0 for 1 with a strikeout. And he got hit back in the first inning. And Lewis, the first pitch. Swing and a miss strike one. There and digging for that pitch. And the 0-1, strike two looking. And Lewis, the 0-2 pitch. Under the strike zone, ball one. Ethan Lewis with a really impressive impression so far. One and two, ground ball. This one getting into the hole in center field. Kyle Wolden looked like he was going for it, decided to give up halfway. Theron Perkins with a one-out single. Here is the second baseman, Aaron Lampin, and 0 for 1 with a walk in the first, and a fly out to the center fielder, Dylan Carter, to end the second that had runners on second and third. And Lewis first pitch, swing and a miss, strike one. And Lewis stepping off, looking at Theron. As Theron gets his third hit of the series against the Mount Vernon Bulldogs. And the throw to first. Not in time, a quick tag by McGahee. Not gonna do it. <laughs> and Lewis stepping off of some additional information from the Cascade Monroe game. Joe McBride was pitching yesterday for the Bruins against Monroe and 
Now it'll be Brock Gillis pitching against Monroe here, the 0-1. Throw the first dot in time, and this is key for one reason, and that is because the next opponent for the Mount Vernon Bulldogs on Friday will be at home against the Cascade Bruins. There'll be a possibility that the Bruins will throw Jaden Talt against the Bulldogs. And the 0-1, and a strike two looking. Another 0-2 count, the third straight batter for Ethan Lewis. And Lewis, the 0-2 pitch. Upstairs, ball one. And Theron will go to second for a stolen base. A late reaction by the catcher, Cole Williams. It moves Theron to second. For Theron's 13th stolen base of the season. And Lewis, the one, two. In the dirt, gets away from Cole Williams. A wild pitch, Theron moves the third. And the first wild pitch for Mount Vernon in the first wild pitch in this game. And now with one out in the fourth, the Vikings have a runner on third again. This time it's Theron. First time moving over the third. Let's go, here we go. And Lewis, infield is in again, 2-2. Foul ball. <laughs> uh, the infield is in once again for Mount Vernon. As they are all, as all the infielders are walking near the line between the infield and the grass, 2-2. Hard hit ball, this one going into right field. And that will fall for a foul. Count will stay at two balls and two strikes against the second baseman Lampin, and he was walked back in the first inning on a 3-1 count and was stranded at first, but advanced to second on the fielder's choice. And on a 3-1 pitch, he flew out to the center fielder, Dylan Carter, to end the second inning with runners on second and third. Now with a runner on third, he has another chance to knock in a run. 2-2, the pitch from Lewis. Hard hit shot going in the left field. Back goes Riley Olmstead. That will get over his head. Theron's going to score from third. Aaron's going to second. It's an RBI double for Smalls. And Lake Stevens has a 5-0 lead. I don't know about you, but I think that was caught on recording. And Lampinen, his fourth double of the year and his ninth RBI of the year. Now with a runner at second, here is Trey Long. He had a leadoff double and was the only run in the third inning. Scores now 5-0 Vikings. First pitch, strike one looking. And the 0-1. Ground ball. This one going to the second baseman, Kyle Wolden. He throws the first. It is in time for the second out. It moves Lampin in the third. Now here is Bailey Corley 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts swinging. And Lewis first pitch. A chopper. This one fair to the third baseman, Skyler Jetson. Throw to third is in time. And it'll get him for the third out. And the end of the fourth inning. It is one run on two hits. No errors and one runner left on the score. Lake Stevens five. Mount Vernon nothing. Theron Perkins going back to the mound in the top of the fifth. will face off against the bottom three hitters in Finn Wilson, Sam Nelson, and Kyle Walden as the Vikings look to preserve that 5 nothing lead. And we are now back in the top of the fifth inning. Lake Stevens leads the Mount Vernon Bulldogs 5 to nothing. Theron Perkins, he has thrown 50 pitches. Through four innings of play, it will be the designated hitter, Finn Wilson, who will come up to the plate. He grounded out on a 1-0 pitch to the second baseman, Aaron Lampinen, for the first out in the third. First pitch, foul chopper. <laughs> He'll hit the fence right next to the on-deck hitter, which is the right fielder, Sam Nelson. And behind him is the second baseman, Kyle Walden.
Nelson, one of two guys to get a base hit off of Farron. The 0-1. Check swing, strike two. Now stats entering this game. Farron thir in 13 and a third innings. He's allowed 14 hits. The 0-2, fly ball foul. Thirteen and a third is allowed. Fourteen hits, allowing four earned runs. He walked eight batters and struck out eleven. The 0-2, and it'll be a ball. Count now to one ball and two strikes. So the next series for both teams, the Lake Stevens Vikings playing the presumably final series of the game. If it is true that the Mariner Marauders are not playing for the rest of the year, that is against the Glacier Peak Grizzlies, while the Mount Vernon Bulldogs will play against the top dog of the conference, Cascade. The one-two, foul chopper. And Cascade currently up one nothing after four up at Monroe High School. As those two teams have a definite spot in the Wesco playoffs, regardless of the result, one-two. Swing and a miss, strike three. And Theron gets Finn Wilson swinging for his fourth strikeout of the afternoon. Here is the right fielder, Sam Nelson. <laughs> Sam Nelson, one of two Mount Vernon hitters. They got a base hit off of Theron. First pitch, ball one. So the standings currently for the Wesco 4A Conference, Cascade at six and one in conference play. And Jackson a half game back at six and two, the 1-0. Hard hit shot, straight to the first baseman, Bailey Corley. And Bailey, with those godlike senses at first base, gets the second out. Brings out the nine hitter, Kyle Walden. It was right near the line, too. And Theron, the first pitch. Swing and a miss, strike one. So Jackson, currently with the number two seed, a half game back of Cascade, and it will be decided whether if Cascade will take the first place spot or be tied with it. This one, a line drive ball. Ground ball does Alaska throw to first is in time. That will end the fifth. What a performance by Theron Perkins after five. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. Theron Perkins is definitely on track to get his first varsity win or first win this season as it'll be Ethan Lewis back on the mound in the bottom of the fifth. It'll be the seven, eight, and nine hitters. Tommy Lindgren, Ethan Jansen, and Devin McWaters. He'll be at the plate in the bottom of the fifth. Scores Lake Stevens five, Mount Vernon nothing. And we are now back in the bottom of the fifth inning. Lake Stevens leading the Mount Vernon Bulldogs five to nothing. Ethan Lewis back on the mound facing off against Tommy Lindgren. Got on base on an error by the shortstop Travis Ord in the second inning. And then got a base hit in the third inning, both on the first pitch he saw. Let's see what he can do on the first pitch from Ethan Lewis. Strike one looking curve. He waits on this one. Ethan Lewis again against the seven, eight, and nine hitters, Lindgren, Jansen, and McWaters. The 0-1. Strike two looking. All right, here we go. Swing, here we go. And the 0-2 by Lewis in the dirt, ball one. Lewis, he threw five balls for 15 strikes, 20 pitches in that bottom of the fourth inning. One, two, a quick release by Lewis. Evens the count at two and two. Very similar to what we saw earlier this year. Case Matter did the exact same thing with the number of quick pitches. The two, two, fly ball. That is playable right near the Lake Stevens dugout. Caught by the first baseman, Eric McGahey. For the first out in the bottom of the fifth, here is Ethan Jansen. Got that RBI single back in the bottom of the third inning. And Lewis first pitch. 
Inside ball one. So currently with Cascade, if they beat Monroe, which currently they are on line two because they're up one nothing, one zero. Strike one looking, evens the count. If they beat Monroe, then they will be tied with Jackson for the number one seed in the West Coast Conference. If, and the one one, ball two, count as two and one. But if Cascade, if Cascade wins, they have the full number one spot, two one pitch, another quick pitch, ball three. So far, Ethan Lewis, not a not a good result with those quick pitches. So currently, it is Cascade with the number one seed. They're looking to keep that. Three and one. Fly ball, that is a fly ball playable. In foul territory, Skyler Jensen calling for it, making the catch. In foul territory past the third baseline, it'll be Devin McWaters. One for two with a single, a run, and a strikeout. Who's on deck? Hey, you want to figure it out? I figured it. Lewis first pitch swing and a miss strike one currently tied for third place Monroe and Mount Vernon and the 0-1 strike two looking and currently with the number five seed is the Kamiak Knights at three and six Glacier Peak is under him at two and five and Lake Stevens is two and seven the 0-2 pitch swing and a miss strike three on a quick pitch from Ethan Lewis, his first strikeout of the afternoon that will end the fifth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. The score, Lake Stevens five, Mount Vernon nothing. Theron Perkins will go back to the mound in the top of the six. He'll face off against the top three hitters for the third time around. Cole Williams, Travis Ord, and Skyler Jensen to keep this 5 nothing lead and to keep this amazing pitching performance going for the Lake Stevens Vikings. And we are now back in the top of the sixth inning. Lake Stevens still leads the Mount Vernon Bulldogs 5 to nothing. Theron Perkins, he has thrown 60 pitches through five innings of no-run baseball. And he'll bring up the starting catcher, Cole Williams, 0 for 1 on a strikeout and an error. First pitch, strike one looking. He'll face off against the top three hitters, Cole Williams, Travis Ord, and Skyler Jensen. And Theron, the 0-1. Chopper, past the glove of Jansen. Does Alasco at first is not able to get it. As Cole Williams beats him by a step. It was a nice play by Hunters Alasco. The nice throw and the nice pick by Bailey Corley. But is not able to get Cole Williams. The third hit for the Mount Vernon Bulldogs this afternoon is a leadoff single by Cole Williams. Here is Travis Ord. He was 0 for 2 with a ground out to the third baseman, Ethan Jansen, and a fielder's choice in the third. And Theron first pitch, check swing, strike one looking. So Monroe and Mount Vernon currently tied for the number three spot in the West Coast playoffs. Kamiak has the five, fifth and final spot. Glacier B currently playing Kamiak and trying to tie with them, the 0-1. Upstairs, even at one ball and one strike. So if Glacier Peak wins, and they have a three and five record. And by that standards means they would have the final spot. One, one. Low, ball two. Which makes the upcoming series between the Vikings and the Glacier Peak Grizzlies all the more interesting. Because that means it would give the Vikings a chance to squeeze in if they can just get past both Kamiak and Glacier Peak. Two and one. Fly ball, that is. Out for a foul. Count is even at two and two. As every team in the West Coast Conference except for Mariner is in the running. Two go to the playoffs. Get your guy here. Count is even at two and two. Theron, the pitch, ground ball. This one gets to under the glove of Lampadin as he tries fielding that one backhanded, but it misses it completely. 
And it'll be an error on Lampin and it moves Williams the second and it'll bring up Skylar Jensen. And it went under the glove of the second baseman Lampin. And there's still nobody out in the top of the sixth inning. And Theron, first pitch. Upstairs, ball one. Timeout by Lake Stevens, Josh White. Going up to the mound to talk to Theron. He's been good so far. And the entire infield's walking up as well. Currently nobody in the Lake Stevens bullpen. As Josh White, if everything goes according to plan, will possibly stay with Theron for today's game, and on Friday he can rely on most of his pitching. For Friday on the road, a key road game for the Vikings against Glacier Peak if they want to stay in the playoffs. Now from what it looks like, if the Vikings do pull off with a win, both results if either Kamiak or Glacier Peak wins, it does not look good right now at this moment because that means that both teams are still ahead of Lake Stevens. First pitch, a 1-0 pitch, strike one looking. Count even at one and one. And Skyler 0 for two with a couple of ground outs. First to the pitcher Theron in the first inning, and then the fourth inning started off with a ground out to Lampinen. Theron, the 1-1, one, one. strike two, looking. Count brings out to one and two. And Theron, the one, two, check swing, count is even. As a count now, two balls and two strikes. Mount Vernon threatening again, bringing their first two batters onto the base pass, a leadoff infield single and an error. And this will hit Skylar Jensen in the jersey and the bases are loaded. Cole Williams at third, Travis Ord at second, Skylar Jensen at first. And it brings up the first baseman, Eric McGahee, with a pair of ground outs to the shortstop, Hunter Zalasco. Uh, McGee with a chance to knock in a couple of runs for Mount Vernon. First pitch by Theron. Uh, upstairs, ball one. Now there are, there is a pitcher warming up in the bullpen. That is Tate Brust. Who was scratched from his first base spot earlier today. The 0-1, strike one looking. And Theron with the bases loaded, one and one. And this will hit Eric McGahee and Mount Vernon gets their first run on the board. Back-to-back -back hit batters for Theron Perkins. And it brings in the first run of the game for the Mount Vernon Bulldogs. Now the game-tying run comes into the plate in Riley Olmstead. A strikeout in the second inning, a base hit in the fourth. And Cole Williams will score from third. And Theron, the first pitch. Outside, ball one. And Theron getting the sign from Tommy Lindgren, the wind up in the 1-0. 
Ball two. Uh, Riley Ohm said he was a winning pitcher and hit a solo home run yesterday. 2-0. Inside in the dirt ball three. And Theron behind the count, 3-0. and A strike one looking as Riley Olmstead tosses his bat to the on-deck hitter. <laughs> Three balls and one strike. Theron keeping this at bat alive. Mount Vernon. Could possibly get a couple more, three and one. And is a foul chopper, full count. <laughs> count now full. A key moment in this game as the Bulldogs have the game tying run at home plate. And the payoff pitch by Theron. Foul ball. As that hits the school bus. Behind home plate. Triggering the horn, full count. This is the bus that Mount Vernon baseball team came off of behind home plate. And Theron getting the sign from Tommy, the payoff. Check swing, strike three, called. Theron gets Riley looking. Hey, get it, double play, let's go. Double play ball. And that's strikeout number five on the afternoon for Theron. Brings up Dylan Carter, the center fielder. First pitch, outside, ball one. And Theron, one ball, no strikes. Theron to Dylan Carter, the pitch. Strike one looking. Evens the count. <laughs> As looks like it might be Theron's final inning. Considering how he has performed here in this inning, allowing a leadoff single, hitting two straight batters to 1-1. Strike two looking. Theron getting some traction again. This time on Dylan Carter. Dylan, he was 0 for 2 with a ground out to the first baseman, Bailey Corley, and then hit into a fielder's choice. One ball and two strikes. And the 1 2. Foul chopper. Fielded by Jansen. Cannot throw home. Throw to first is not in time. An infield single for Dylan Carter. Got to talk. Let him know. We're trying to take out, okay? Travis Ord scores from third. Tommy, Skyler Tommy, Jensen Tommy, moves to third. Eric McGahey four. moves to second. Ethan Jansen fields it, looks at home, can't throw, throws to first, but misses it by a second. And now here is Finn Wilson, the seventh batter in this inning. He is 0 for 2 with a ground out to the second baseman, Lampinen struck out swinging in the fifth. And Theron, first pitch. Strike one looking. Bases are still loaded. The score, Lake Stevens 5, Mount Vernon 2. And the game tying run is at first base in Dylan Carter. The game leading run is at home plate in Finn Wilson. And there in the 0-1. Hard hit ball. This one going into right center field. Back goes Trey and McWaters. Trey makes the catch. And Skyler Jensen will score from third. The throw home is not in time. A sacrifice fly by Finn Wilson makes it 5-3. Hey, 
Runners stay at first and second. Here is Sam Nelson, the right fielder. Uh, Farron. Runners on first and second. First pitch, a strike one looking. <laughs> and Theron, the 0-1. A strike two looking. Nice pitch by Theron. Count now at 0-2. And the 0-2 Theron, one hopper in the dirt. Nice stop by Tommy Lindgren as runners stay at first and second. And Theron, one ball, two strikes to pitch. Fly ball, that is out for a foul past the Mount Vernon dugout. Count at one and two. Hi, bitch. Hi, and Theron still ahead of the count with a chance to finish off. The top of the sixth inning against the eighth batter of the inning, Sam Nelson. One ball and two strikes. Tommy steps, my mistake, Theron steps off. Let's get the sign from Tommy Lindgren. All started with an infield single by Cole Williams, an error by Aaron Lampinen when Travis Orr with that place at the plate, and then back-to-back -back hit batters against Skylar Jensen and Eric McGahee, the one-two. This one gets past Tommy, not able to throw to third or second on a wild pitch by Theron Perkins. Evens the count at two and two, and now the game tying run is in scoring position. A very important pitch and a very important at bat right here at Lake Stevens. The two two, and a strike three call, and he gets him looking. Theron Perkins strikes out Sam Nelson. To end the top of the six, three runs on two hits. One error and two runners left on. Mount Vernon gets a few runs on the board, makes it five to three, Lake Stevens. As Ethan Lewis will walk up to the mound, the bottom of the six will face off against Tanner Lynn, Hunters Alasco, and Theron Perkins. As Theron will go back to the plate for the fourth time around, try to increase this five to three lead over the Mount Vernon Bulldogs. And we are now back in the bottom of the sixth inning. Lake Stevens now leads the Mount Vernon Bulldogs by a score of five to three. Ethan Lewis at the plate. First is Tanner Lynn. First pitch to the right fielder who makes the catch. That is the right fielder, Sam Nelson. For the catch for the first out in the bottom of the sixth. Here is Hunter's Alasco, the shortstop. As Alasco, one for three. Fielder's choice, base hit, and a ground out to the third baseman. First pitch, low ball one. And the 1 0. Goes in the dirt, ball two. Ethan Lewis. Throwing 13 pitches to 2 0. And a timeout by Hunter. As the home plate umpire calls time before Ethan throws the pitch, two and one. As a ball three inside. 33 pitches, 10 balls, and 23 strikes so far for Ethan Lewis. Three and oh count. Strike one looking. Three and one. Fly ball foul. 
for a full count at three and two. As is now a full count for the second batter. And this will hit Hunter square in the back. As it'll be the third hit batter for the Lake Stevens Vikings this afternoon. That is the 10th time this year that leads the team by a mile in hit batsman. And Hunter has been hit 10 times and what a better place to hit him than square on the back than his number 10 jersey. First pitch of strike one looking to Theron. And the throw to first, not in time. And the count, 0-1 oh to Lewis. Hard hit ball, this will go in the left field. Riley Olmstead is under it and will make the catch for the second out. Here is Aaron Lampinen, he hit the RBI double back in the fourth inning that scored Theron from third. And Ethan Lewis, first pitch, strike one looking. Throw to first, not in time. Throw to second is cut off by the shortstop, a late tag. As Alasco gets his second stolen base of the afternoon. Count starts at 0-1. And it is the eighth stolen base, eight for nine on the year for Hunter. Count at 0-1, Lewis. Low, ball one. The Vikings with another run in scoring position in Hunter's Alasco after getting a stolen base. Another stolen base from first to second, 1-1. One, one. one hopper pass to catcher Cole Williams. Alasco going to third on a wild pitch. And it is the second wild pitch by Ethan Lewis. And the pitch fly ball, that is right near foul territory. And Eric McGahee makes the catch right in front of the Lake Stevens dugout to end the six. No runs, no hits, no errors. One runner left on Lake Stevens five, Mount Vernon three. A new pitcher for the Lake Stevens Vikings. That is number nine, Tate Bruss, trying to close this out and try to snap Lake Stevens' four-game losing streak. It'll be a 9-1 and two hitters. It'll be Kyle Walden, Cole Williams, and Travis Ord, who tries to extend this game as the Vikings currently lead by two runs. Again, the Vikings, they need three outs to snap a four-game losing streak. And we are now back in the top of the seventh inning. Lake Stevens looking to snap a four-game losing streak here at Lake Stevens High School against the Mount Vernon Bulldogs. Tate Brust on the mound against the number nine hitter, Kyle Wolden. First pitch upstairs for a ball one. And Tate Bruss is fifth appearance this year. He has started in two games. He is one and one with an ERA of 3.89. Tate the 1-0. And a check swing strike one looking. Count is even at one and one. And Tate Bruss in seven and two thirds innings. He's allowed six hits and four earned runs. He has walked 11 batters and struck out three. The 1-1. One -one. And the dirt ball two. And Theron Perkins finishing up his afternoon. Six innings, 94 pitches, four hits, three runs. One of them earned no walks and five strikeouts while he hit two batters and had one wild pitch to two one Swing and a miss. Count is even at two and two. And Tate Bruss was his starting pitcher in the Vikings matchup on the road against Cascade. 2-2. Two -two. Low, full. Which in that game, he threw an inning and two-thirds, allowing 57 pitches. He allowed no hits, but five runs, four of them unearned. Walked four batters, struck out two. And the payoff pitch, fly ball, left field. Tanner, he is looking for it. He is under it, and he makes the catch for the first out in the top of the seventh. Brings us to the top of the order for the fourth time around. And the starting catcher, Cole Williams, he is... One for two with a strikeout and got on base on an error and then got on base on a leadoff infield single and was one of the three runs that scored. Oh, 
And Tate, the first pitch. And a strike one looking. And Tate the 0-1. And that will hit Cole Williams, the third hit batter for the Mount Vernon Bulldogs, this time with one out in the seventh. Here is Travis Ord, got on base on the error by Aaron Lamp, and he tried fielding a ball with his glove backhanded. The ball got under his glove. Would have been for two, but he's one of the three runs that scored. <laughs> And Tate, the first pitch. Check swing, strike one looking. And Tate, the 0-1, inside, count is even. At one ball and one strike. And Tate getting the sign from Tommy, the 1-1. One, one. Ground ball fielded by Jansen. Throw to second for one. Throw to two. This one belongs to the Lake Stevens Vikings. They beat the Mount Vernon Bulldogs and ended on a 5-4-3 double play. Hey, go shake it up. The Lake Stevens Vikings get another win in the win column as they beat the Mount Vernon Bulldogs. They split the series by the final score of 5-3. to three. The winning pitcher is Theron Perkins. He gets his first winning through six innings of solid ball. And the losing pitcher is Hudson Rines. The Vikings will go up to a 500 overall record of eight wins and eight losses and a conference record of now 3-7. and seven. Not where they want to be now, but closer than what they were before today. And for the Mount Vernon Bulldogs, they are now 9-7 and seven overall with a conference record of 4-4. Four and four. If you count the Mariner games, they have a record of 6-4. and four. And currently the game between Cascade and Monroe is tied at 1. So I guess we have to wait until that result is done. So now from Lake Stevens High School, the final score, Lake Stevens 5, Mount Vernon 3. The next game for both of these teams, the Vikings will play at Glacier Peak High School on Friday, April 19th to try and crawl their way back for a final playoff spot while the Mount Vernon Bulldogs will play against the Cascade Bruins at Sherman Anderson Field on that same day. Again, from Lake Stevens High School, the final score is Lake Stevens 5, Mount Vernon 3 at 5.39 p.m. My name is Payne Patchett. You have been listening to Lake Stevens Vikings Varsity Baseball.